screen, a defect being discovered. When a utility company's been in and they've repaired after they finished digging, mm -hmm. and then it's called in because they haven't repaired correctly, mm -hmm. what are the legal limits on, on how quickly you can get the levels back? Um, I don't know the exact time frames, but generally they sort of work on the same basis as us. They've got sort of standard type defects that they would deal with as a low priority, and then they've got emergency defects which they would pass as a high priority. So it would really depend on how risky that defect is to the general public and how quickly they, they would get back in. Can, can you get some information on the time? Because if, yeah. if you look around the town, yeah. there are an incredible number of, of utility dug holes in yeah. very expensive cobble repairs yeah. that are reported in, yeah. painted down as if they're going to come back and do them. They're yeah. not coming back for a year, 18 months. Okay. Sometimes they come back once, and they're going to come yeah. back twice, and there's one of those lines that they've done three times, and still got wrong. So, it would be useful if, if you want to have a county council or have a traffic and null to actually force them to do the job properly. Mm. Um, but it's also the understanding that having to bring them back again and again and again, they're causing four or five times the disruption that they've already caused, and it's outside the control of the county council. That would be a useful piece of information to send ahead of these. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you, John. Are there any other questions? Councillor Lord. Yeah, thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, I'd like to thank Gavin for giving us this presentation. Uh, I was just wondering, would it be uh, a nice thing to do for this council uh, to send a letter to Amy's uh, senior managers advising them that it was a very professional and informative presentation and that we thank them very much for allowing me to come here and do it? Is that a proposition? It is, Mr. Mayor. Is there a seconder? Councillor White, you had your hand up first. You're prepared to second. <laughs> All those in favour, please. Thank you. <laughs> and that was unanimous. Was unanimous. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Councillor White. Yeah, that was a smooth bit, yeah, because the back angle. Um, which part of your department deals with um, traffic management survey? The reason I ask is that Richmond, at certain times of the day, there is no traffic management, it's just, it all stands still. Yes. Now, we know that highways haven't got any money, so by the time they have got the money to do something about it, it would be nice if we could have had the surveys done uh, and in order, because in two or three years time, Richmond will become standstill yeah. for the majority of the day. And it's all basically around the traffic lights. Oh, oh, okay. oh. Further on. Further on. <coughs> yeah. Barrack Hill. Barrack Hill. Yeah. Right. Council House. Yes. Now, Amy probably said the same, same thing. Amy's had multiple emails on the subject. <laughs> um, traffic lights have been monitored. And apparently they are at their optimum. And the big issue is that, well, one of the big issues, because I'm not convinced yet, but it's an ongoing battle. But the big problem is that drivers don't actually pay the highway code. If people stopped forcing their way onto roundabouts and blocking traffic in all directions, then it would flow much more smoothly. And I have to say, having spent so much of my recent life in the library, and until very recently being out on a regular basis having a cigarette because on the train six days you have to see one round of the Yes. <laughs> um, it's absolutely incredible watching how cars just don't give a monkey's armpit about what the law says they can and can't do. They just force their way on the block roundabouts, which creates further problems, further backups, and more and more angry drivers that keep forcing their way, forcing their way. Now, in some areas, it's not the end of the world, because if you backed up in a co-op, well, that's fine, there's plenty of space to be backed up there. But if you're trying to get through from the Reef Road or down King Street to get on, and you've got people coming up Dundas Street who really don't want to wait more than three seconds before they're out of town, it creates perhaps a panic. So, we are discussing with the police, 
who, as you know, are very selective in the laws that they wish to enforce, getting them to do some traffic work with drivers, trying to make them understand what they should and shouldn't be doing, because the highway code, you know, once you pass the driving test, most people forget it. And they just, there the seems to be this obsession with drivers that they are the only people in the entire world that matters. And it is their vehicle that has to get across and get home and get there as quickly as possible, and it doesn't matter what their mission it causes to the rest of the world. So there is some ongoing work on that. But I am told by everybody, including the Director of Highways and the Chief Executive of the North Yorkshire County Council, that the traffic lights function perfectly, sadly the drivers don't. But we are on it, and we are trying to get the solution to work in I'm glad to hear there's work being done on Mm -hmm. I still think there is work to be done with the traffic lights because people like myself that live in um, Whitefields, we <coughs> all know that during school time it's possible to go through the back roads and come down Gallifields, which causes a queue to come onto the lights from that angle. Um, and that means the lights change more often. So it really does need, oh, the whole thing needs a good survey. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, the whole town is being looked at because of all the diversions that we've been taking. We have a proposed development up on Washington Road, which would increase traffic in all those difficult roads. What we keep, or what we have to keep in mind is that all the roads were built when cars were very, very rare. And now all of a sudden we've got every house with one, two, sometimes three or four cars. Less buses. The County Council's charging for uh, home to school transport for 16 plus and for some shorter distance pupils. So those parents are all getting their cars and driving their children to the school as well. Uh, I went to a meeting at 1 o'clock on last Wednesday just off Cross uh, Lanes and the number of vehicles that were already parked up to collect children Sorry, from that. Richmond School and the primary schools and causing traffic problems. Mm. At one o'clock in the afternoon, when the beautiful sheriffs are out to at least 3 30, it's really quite frightening. And an awful lot of them were Richmond parents. Yeah, quite good. And the day was lovely. More than planned, and Cherub could have walked home, but apparently that's not allowed anymore. So we, we are, in, in many respects, individuals are very responsible for creating our own problems and making them worse. And again, it's that aspect of what I want to do is the most important thing in this world, and it doesn't quite matter the knock on impact on other people. And it's just an education thing. We are working, we're trying to work with the wardens, the police, and the county council to try and get those issues addressed. And it should be the same up. Mm. Our work safety officer is trying to do a little bit of education in the school mm. parents as well. It's quite common at school times. Um, Councillor Spencer. Uh, yeah, just um, just to lighten on what uh, Councillor I said there. What um, does the police um, affect you on when we have uh, uh, actually an uh, accident or major disruption on the A1 itself and traffic actually gets diverted through mm -hmm. through us and then trying to get round? This also has an, uh, an effect on the town as well. But yet we don't see any extra police out on them times, and inadvertently, it, that comes around when the school times as well. So you, not only you've got the, the uh, parents picking up the children at school times, and the local people coming from work, but then also you've got the diversion from the A1 itself. Um, surely that survey itself should take into consideration. <laughs> so it, it, it is taken into consideration, but when there's a major incident on the A1, the vehicles have to be taken off the A1 and directed somewhere. And the preferred route is along by Catra Village, through Colburn, and into Richmond, which creates huge problems down here, and then huge problems as people try and access the A66 going up the end road and so on. There's nothing we can do to stop major incidents happening on the, on the A1. And when those days happen, there is very close monitoring of the traffic. But what you'll find is the police are all on the A1 dealing with the incident, rather than coming out and, and trying to control traffic and direct traffic. 
And I, I suppose the answer to all of this is, if the government stops cutting things, then perhaps we might have the manpower to do it. But that doesn't seem to be what's happening, and the police are all getting absolutely terrified of the numbers of police officers that are going to go. And then if they have less officers, then we will see even fewer of them. So it, it's, it's a huge problem of funding and willingness and control and where the immediate issue and the immediate danger is that cause the police act in one place rather than another. If we had a major accident following on from the A1 being closed, then you would see them. But it is considered, and we are trying to find a way around it, but again, all these heavy vehicles are going on roads that weren't designed for them, can't be widened, if we have the money to widen them, there's just no way for that to happen. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councillor Harris. Yes, just a, just a quick comment, a couple of quick comments, just another question. Um, the court round about line, there used to be lane markings at one point. There are. They've been well, reinstated. They've gone down and yes. they've been visible now. For the last two months. Yes. Yeah, yes. yes. Two months ago there was a lot of rain. But it doesn't seem to have been improved, but I'm getting at it. Um, sorry, it's really, so I think to encourage people to use those lane markings would be the best thing we can do now. In relation to the schools parking, I've seen parents come park their cars and walk home, which obviously means they're close enough to their homes to be able to take their children home. The question I was going to ask was, in relation to the highways repairs, is there a, a complete list of what's going to be done during a year, or is it a rolling programme every three months or whatever? Um, so can we consult it on, the, on these now? Generally, the capital funding is allocated on, a, on an annual basis and the programme is usually discussed early in the year. So, 1617, the loads have been decided, the programme will probably start being discussed in about February time. Um, as part of my role, I'm going to try and get the programme sent out as soon as possible. Um, obviously, the earlier that we send it out, the more chance there is for certain dates change, um, but I'm going to try and provide that information on a monthly basis. Um, with regards to general maintenance, that does roll through the year, so we get programmes from our contractor on a regular basis with regards to the general maintenance. So that can be anything from uh, a few pothole repairs up to £10,000 worth of patching. Um, so it depends on, on which works it is. To help in the of Can I ask how precise are the indications? Sorry. Just going to ask how precise are the indications of where the river works can take place? Do you mean the expense of the work or the dates? Location. The locations. Generally, the, um, the expense of the work, the, the engineers will know where it starts and where it ends. Um, usually, we wouldn't provide that. With, it, with program information, um, but it can be provided if necessary. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Are there any other councillors besides Councillor Adams who wish to ask a question? Because I'm aware that Amy needs to get home and has got a fair way to go, and I'm also aware that we have a long agenda. Yes. Councillor Adams. Thank you. Just a very quick question. Who is it that decides which roads are gritted and when they're gritted? Is it is it one particular section or is it a third? The annual minute, sorry, the priorities are decided by the generally executive for highways and the director for highways. There's usually a meeting around September, the beginning of September each year, um, where requests for upgrades are discussed. Right. Um, you can request an upgrade in the priority of the road any time throughout the year, but it will always wait till that September for that September meeting for a decision. So all the um, upgrades and requests for upgrades have already been discussed for this year's service. So moving forward for anything for next year's service will be discussed next September. Right. Um, but on the website, um, it shows you which which roads are which priority. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.